Hello, this is Dr. Amin Marashi, retina specialist in Marashi Eye Clinic in Aleppo, Syria. I am presenting the course of OCT for macular diseases. In the previous presentation, I discussed the reflectivity changes in the vitreous and inner retinal tissue. In this presentation, I will discuss outer retinal layers and choroid reflectivity changes. Hard exudates will appear as an increased hyperreflective irregular consolidated masses in the outer retinal tissues, which usually cast a shadow artifact causing hyperreflectivity of the underlying retinal tissues. In contrast, the hyperreflective dots found in cases of diabetic macular edema, macular edema related to retinal vein occlusion, and age related macular degeneration. They are a sign of an inflammatory process due to activated microglia, which are usually small and don't cast any shadow. This is a case of non-central diabetic macular edema with hard exudate presented in hyperreflective masses with different sizes. They are located in the outer retinal tissue casting shadow artifact causing hyporeflectivity of the underlying retinal tissues. In contrast, the adjacent hyperreflective dots don't cast any shadow. In negative black and white, the hard exudates appear in shades of black with an irregular border which casts a white shadow hindering the underlying retinal tissues. In contrast, the hyperreflective dots appear as black dots that don't cast any shadow. This is another case of central diabetic macular edema shows increased central macular thickness with cystic changes. As we look closer, hyperreflective dots are surrounding the cysts and those dots form what is called a pearl necklace sign, which may indicate chronic diffuse leakage due to chronic inflammatory processes caused by activated microglia. However, some authors reported that those hyperreflective foci are lipid-filled macrophages at the inner edema wall. They are predecessor to hard exudates but fade away spontaneously or post-treatment. In negative black and white, those dots are seen more clearly, and negative black and white can be used in cases we doubt if the hyperreflective foci are presented or not, and helps to determine the exact location and number. Please note that in negative black and white cross section, the disruption of the ellipsoid zone and external limiting membrane are seen more clearly. Intraretinal hemorrhage will appear as a homogeneous hyperreflective with a smooth regular border inducing shadow artifact, causing hyperreflectivity of the underlying retinal tissue. In contrast, in negative black and white, the intraretinal hemorrhage will appear as a homogeneous black color with smooth regular borders casting white shadow hindering the underlying retinal tissue. This is a case of advanced neovascular age-related macular degeneration causing accumulation of subretinal fluids and blood, which appears as homogeneous hyperreflective with smooth regular borders casting shadow artifact. However, this cross-section shows fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment, which has more heterogeneous hyperreflectivity. This is more appreciated using negative black and white mode as the subretinal hemorrhage appears more homogeneous black color with a smooth regular borders than the continent of the fibrovascular pigment epithelial detachment. It appears heterogeneous black color due to fibrovascular components. This is a case of inferior retinal detachment involving the center of the macula showing subretinal fluid with disruption and increased reflectivity of the ellipsoid zone located temporally. The most common reason for the increased reflectivity of the choroid is geographic atrophy. This is due to the absence of the RPE layer to reflect the light. 
as in this case, the dry edge related macular degeneration with the drusen in different sizes and RPE atrophy, causing geographic atrophy and prominent Brooks membrane with increased reflectivity of the underlying choroid. Hypo-reflectivity of the choroid is usually due to shadow artifact caused by large hard exudates or hemorrhages located in the retinal or subretinal tissue. However, contraction of RPE in cases of RPE tear, which appears as increased reflectivity causing indent of the retina, may cause hyporeflectivity of the choroid due to shadow artifact and increased reflectivity of the adjacent area of the choroid due to absence of RPE in an area where RPE was ripped off. Thank you for listening. I hope you find this information useful in your daily clinical practice. Please stay tuned for the next presentations where I will discuss clinical application of OCT in cases of vitromacular abnormalities.